Hello my peoples. So today it's going to be a little bit more gear focused. We're going to talk about my cinema camera rig. So if you're interested in gear, then stay tuned. And if you're not, you might get some good stuff out of this as well. See you soon. So today I want to introduce you to the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K rig that I've been using for about almost a year now, I'd say. And I have to say that it's been the best camera I've ever used to date. So why don't we just get right to it? I'll be right back. So first things first is I'm going to switch the angle up in a little bit here so you can get a better look at the camera. But right now, the first thing that I'm traveling with and moving this camera around with is this Sackler bag. Um, I've seen different cinematographers using Sackler products. The tripods are their most popular. But when I saw someone using their bags and I saw how heavy duty they were, how reliable. I mean, this thing is really sturdy and I've put it in a lot of uh, different kind of situations and it hasn't ripped or broken or done anything like that. And I've had this almost as long as I've had the camera. So that's the first thing. One of the things I love the most about this bag is that it's got these really cool, easy to use zippers, kind of boom. And then you can keep everything in there. So I keep my matte box and the camera um, all in one, which is really nice. And I got all my, these little pockets and stuff here. Super unorganized right now because I just finished a shoot. But you can get an idea of what can be held inside of the bag. So one of the nice things about this setup is that I can just kind of... The base of, the, of my setup is already made. Like I don't have to put the rails in or do everything like that. Let me take this apart so you can see. So this is like the basic setup of my my rig right now. So it all starts with the rail system. So I went with this small rig system. Um, I'm not, I'll, I'll leave the models in the description below, but um, this thing is awesome. These are also 16 inch rails because I find that I use a teleprompter sometimes and that's gonna, that gives me the best kind of wiggle room um, as well as my matte box that I use sometimes. So. The really cool thing about this is that, you know, you can put any type of plate. It's got like the cheese plate bottom. So for the Pocket 4K, this is like this camera. If you have $1,300 and you're making a movie or something, this is like, if it's a bigger budget movie, then this would still be an amazing B camera and like compete. Um, so this is awesome because the small rig cage that I have here um, makes it super easy to kind of mount things on, mount monitors on, etc. Um, and I have the SSD holder here for my Samsung uh, T5. So the cool thing with these rails is that I can just do one of these, boom. So this is the Manfrotto style um, plate. Uh, I'm sure there's another name for it, but uh, Manfrotto style is, is going to cover you if you search it or Google search it. Um, and on the bottom, this also has a Manfra Manfrotto style plate. So this just goes right onto your tripod. This is really cool because when you put it, you just throw it on there and then you can lock it right here. Boom, and you're secure. Like, doesn't get any better than that. Um, and if you ever wanted to go handheld, you just push the safety button, unlock it. Boom, you can shoot, do all you need. Um, so after that, so I'm using a LAN part um, V-mount adapter here, and it's really cool. It has all these different, it has D-tap, has all these different types of voltages. Um, I used to use it with my Atomos Ninja V um, on my Sony a7S II when that was my main rig, but that's my B camera now for interviews and things like that, and this has become the A camera. And... Again, I can't talk enough about the dynamic range on the Pocket 4K. Like, it's just been amazing. So, I just throw that on the back here. And just boom, boom, boom. So the next part of the setup is the Core SWX HyperCore Neo Mini 9. So, these are uh, 
I don't know too much about batteries uh, and spec specifications for how batteries drain and work and the voltages that they give out and all that stuff. What I can tell you is that I know that core batteries have very reputable um, usages. They're used on the biggest budget films, which means that reliability um, and reputation are a factor there. Um, and this battery gives me like between six and eight hours of work on powering the Pocket 4K and my monitor, which I'll show you in a little bit how that works. So um, on this battery, the top has D-tap, or sorry, it says uh, P-tap, and it also has a USB port. So I can output up to six volts. So that's really cool there. And then this part just goes, so this part just goes right into the back here. Just clicks in, simple, uh, easy. So funny story, on a shoot this week, um, one of the reasons I bought this battery is for redundancy. You know, with the ability to do USB, I can power some things off of it, specifically in my audio recorder. And I was having some power issues with my audio recorder that required me to have it plugged in the whole time. So this is the audio recorder I've been using. And usually what I do is I'll, um, I have a clamp that just kind of clamps onto the tripod and then I can run uh, eighth inch into my input here for the microphone input. I go line out from the recorder into the pocket 4K. So I have kind of redundancy with recording and I have, you know, power and, uh, and phantom power for my shotgun mic. But for some reason, this thing needed to be plugged in the whole time. Like it was just draining batteries. And I, I genuinely think like it was some sort of anomaly. And I had left my USB to kind of the USB wall blocks that, you know, you use to charge your iPhones or Androids. And so this uses a, you, like a, I think micro USB, Android type of charger to U, USB, right? I was searching my entire gear bag my like electronic bag, my computer bag, everything. I was searching like high and low and freaking out. And I actually had to end up asking the client to borrow a USB wall block. And it was like, I felt like such a failure as a filmmaker because one of the things that we prepare for is we have a backup and then another backup of a backup. And then it, like we have just so many backups. But in this moment, I was just kind of freaking out. And I didn't realize until after the first interview that, oh yeah, you bought this battery because you can just go from like whatever power you need straight into USB and run like all your, like your power needs from there. So that was a lesson learned. And thankfully the past version of me remembered to uh, plan ahead and I had this battery to kind of get me through the rest of the shoot. So that was definitely one benefit of that. And if you want me to do a review of my recorder, like just comment down below. But at the end of the day, I think I'm going to try and invest in a, a Zoom F6. There's a guy named uh, Alex Knickerbocker who has an awesome YouTube channel. And he's like a Hollywood big budget sound design guy. He has a YouTube channel that you should definitely go check it out. I can link that below as well. But he recommended this recorder, the Tascam DR100 Mark III. And it has been really good. Like it's not noisy, nothing is wrong with it necessarily. But I have started feeling recently as my shoots get a little bit more complex that it's kind of falling short of what I need. So I'm definitely looking at the Zoom F6 because of the 32-bit float which for like you audio nerds out there, I'm sure you know, but it's basically like raw. When you're taking a photo that's raw, you have so much more headroom. 32-bit float is essentially that uh, there, in this particular recorder, there's low, like a, there are two channels, one's that, one that focuses on the low volume recordings and one that focuses on the high volume recordings. So it's like, kind of like the same idea of dual native ISO, but if you could film, or 
kind of like the same idea of HDR with video where you get the darkest shadows and the highest highlights and you can kind of squish them so you can see it all in the image. Same thing with audio. So it's like you don't have to worry about your audio clipping. So stay tuned for that if I do invest in that sometime soon. So another part of my rig is the handle. So it's a NATO, NATO handle. You can see in there and it, it just slides right in uh, and then I can just tighten it up and I am good to go. So let me just make sure that that's actually flat. Yeah, cool. Tightens right up. And then on this side, I have my Samsung drive. Um, I know some people don't like to have just like one drive. This is a terabyte, um, but it hasn't, you know, knock on wood. It's It's been reliable and it's worked for me. So I what I do is I slide this cable through here plug it in and then just boom and i I've, I've uh, I'm using the small rig um, holder as well for this and I've seen some people kind of complain because I don't know if you can see this here but this little notch kind of runs into the other one I mean I guess if you're filming an action movie or like you're you're using this to like mount it to a car that's driving or whatever you want it as secure as possible but i find that i don't really need to tighten it so much it's always kind of like in quote unquote studio mode and it's sitting on a tripod so i just kind of give it a nice gentle like you know until it's fitted so in terms of power i bought this dtap2 limo i think this is called um regardless you can google it um D tap to or P tap to um, pocket 4K power adapter. So that just goes in here. So another important piece of my rig is this Andy Cine um, articulating magic arm. So these were a little bit more than like your typical small rig one, but it is 100% worth the investment. It comes in like a hard case, which is kind of unbelievable. Um, so when you open it up, Andy Cine. And the cool thing about this is the other ones, uh, usually the magic arms that you have, you have to kind of like screw the whole arm into one end and then screw the whole thing into the other. This one has its own like kind of rotating screw. Um, easy to grip, super easy. Um, so that goes up here. And you can use an Allen wrench to tighten this up if you want to. I'm just gonna leave it kind of loose. But the other thing is that it has these ball joints, I guess you'd say, and um, like they can go all over, they work all over and tightening it. Another thing with the kind of your typical magic arm is that the, the tightening thing is not, it's like flat and like annoying, it digs into you. And I know that that's super petty and like, so like, I feel so spoiled saying this but this <laughs> like it, it's the least should be the least of your concerns but essentially this is so much more comfortable to tighten and the way it's just designed like it doesn't move it's so good and after using all of these with heavy monitors that do move like you adjust your monitor and then it all kind of just like does one of these like where it just collapses and you have to tighten it it's such a pain in the butt i don't have to deal with that anymore and it's really exciting so one of the most exciting parts of my rig is the small HD702 OLED, which I did an unboxing video of, uh, so you can check that out. Um, but yeah, so I just screw that up right here. And this makes it super easy. I just screw it in here. And then I can kind of tilt it down. So if I'm working this way, like this. That's not going anywhere. So, so then the last part of my rig is my mat box. So, I always just slide that in. So this is the Fotga DP five hundred mat box. I got this uh, early on when I had like when I was using the A seven S as an A cam as well. One of the so going back to the beginning, one of the reasons I got the small rig rail uh, adapter here is because you can actually slide the rails up and down and with the mat box i found that i needed to do that because when i have a teleprompter i can adjust it depending on the height of your lens you can adjust it um, and i found that different mat boxes obviously needed different heights 
and that kind of stuff. So um, I just pop this in here. Speaking of adjustability with the rails, you can see how this is kind of far off up here. So I can just, I loosened the rails here and here, and I can just slide this in there and then tighten it up. And then the camera is also more balanced um, for you there. So I know this is kind of a big setup. This is not by any means a run and gun setup, but uh, if you ever did need to run and gun, I could just do one of these and then unplug the battery and I'm good to go. And I do do that often where I'm shooting and then I can just kind of take the camera off. And then when I need it back on everything, essentially I just pop that back in there, lock it, pop and lock it. Then I just plug my camera back in. So I don't use a dummy battery because there's a battery in here and when my V-mount is plugged in, it's basically charging the camera. And then when I pull it out and I'm running gun, I have basically, you know, the terrible 30 minute or so record time for the Pocket 4K. Um, so I don't generally need to use that, but when I'm running gun, I know I have like 20 or 30 minutes of just free time and it's a fully charged battery, so. So a rig like this is totally, in my opinion, the purpose of getting a Pocket 4K. It's a rig that you're gonna want to grow into. So all of these pieces I got over time, I didn't buy it all at once, I couldn't afford it like that, but I could afford the camera and it comes with DaVinci Resolve Studio as part of the whole package. The cool thing about this camera is you can actually recover highlights after you've already shot as well. So it's almost kind of like this has an added dynamic range in the highlights. It's, it's been super useful for me and I, again, highly recommend it. And just in case you're wondering, I've used um, Sony FS7 cameras, FS5, uh, with the, both with RAW and I've used RED cameras with RAW. Um, and I would put the dynamic range of this against those any day. Um, even with the HDR on the red stuff, like um, the biggest thing with filmmaking is lighting, sound, and then your camera. Think of it this way. Think of filmmaking just the same as music. And the industries run pretty parallel, which is kind of awesome uh, in terms of technology and movement and all that stuff and where they're headed. Um, like streaming is taking over and that happened uh, like at the beginning of the 2000s for music, right? So they're kind of running in similar waves. But what's more important? The microphone that the singer uses, the guitar, like the guitar brand that they're using, the pedals, the amps, or is it the singer himself, right? Like I remember listening to an interview from the guy from Extreme. I think the guitarist from Extreme, you know, that song, more than words, that, that whole thing. Um, he was saying that he met Van Halen and he finally got to play his rig, right? Like Van Halen was like, yeah, like, here's my setup, like play it. And he was like, yes, I'm finally going to sound like Van Halen, like the secret sound. And he played the guitar and he sounded, he said he sounded nothing like Van Halen. So it's the person behind everything that's more important than like all the gear and all this stuff, right? So number one, focus on your filmmaking. Number two, learn lighting, learn sound. And then number three, like, yes, having a cinema camera is extremely helpful. Just like having like a beautifully sounding acoustic guitar or something like that and how that will help your sound as a musician, right? But knowing how to play the instrument is more important. Knowing how to sing, knowing how to do all the things that make the music are just as important as the things you're plugging into the sound. So same thing goes here. Well, anyways, I hope you enjoyed the rig. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment below. Please follow and like my goal this year. Let's see if we can get to a, uh, a thousand subscribers. Like, let's do it. <laughs> And I'm going to keep the content coming, so don't forget to make your goals and dreams a reality, and remember that you can do it. I'll talk to you guys on the next one. 
Peace. Cause all you gotta smash like, subscribe, click the links down below so I make a time. Comment, say hi, hit the bell so I know I see me.